All right, thanks so much, Rebecca. And now from the energy pits to down on the farm. Yep. Yep. Corn. Some of us know what that's like. Some of us do. <clears throat> Corn, soybeans, wheat, milk, you name it, they're Chickens. at record highs. Chickens. Chickens. Oh, I have a chicken picture for you. All right, so why should taxpayers still subsidize American farmers? Today, the House debates a proposed reform bill, which some call a step backward. Jane Wells, live in Oxnard with the low down, down on the farm. Da -da 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 -da. She looks da -da. great on the farm. <laughs> Uh, actually, you know, this is Ventura County, one of the top producing ag counties in the country, but not a lot of subsidy money coming here. The president is threatening to veto this bill. It's going to get ugly, especially with new data coming out from the USDA on just who's getting your money. Take a look at this. Texas billionaire oil man Lee Bass has gotten almost $600,000 in subsidies in 10 years. David Rockefeller right behind him. Paul Allen with more than one hundred and thirty grand. Even that old farmer... Former Chicago Bull Scotty Pippen with over $210,000 in subsidies. Now, nearly all the money goes to the big organizations with five crops. Corn, soybeans, wheat, rice, and cotton. So here comes this new farm bill for the next five years, which actually increases, this is supposed to be reform, increases direct payments to farmers from 40 to 60 grand, and you'd be surprised who qualifies. But you don't have to be growing crops. You don't have to be living on the farm, working on the farm living near the farm. In fact, as we discovered yesterday from the government report that came out, you don't even have to be alive. Yes, we found that two years ago, Jack Benny got $18,000 for his farm. He's not around anymore. Uh, the proposed new bill also limits who can get subsidies to those making less than a million dollars a year adjusted gross income. That's after you back out all the expenses that go into farming. That's net profit. A million dollars. They call it reform, but the loopholes in it are so large you can literally drive a combine through it. All right, Wisconsin Democrat Ron Kind is a farmer. He's leading the charge to amend the bill, though basically he wants to move the money around, not necessarily reduce it, cut subsidies and put cash into crop insurance and conservation. His bipartisan amendment would phase out those direct payments and cap the adjusted gross income for those who qualify for subsidies at 250 grand. Now, Maurice Wilder says that's not fair. He's a developer worth an estimated 400 million bucks. He owns 200,000 acres, including this farm in Texas growing corn. Wilder's gotten about $2 million in subsidies, but he says, hey, you know what, just because he's big, he loses money too in a down year, and it turns out his subsidy is less per acre than the little guy. I can't understand why they would penalize a large farmer when I don't think they penalize a large car dealer. I feel I'm just as good as a small farmer, and I think that I'm entitled to stuff just as a small farmer is. And he says big farms are important to the American economy, though he agrees right now corn should probably not be subsidized. Also, Mark and Aaron, if this bill is passed, there is, it could uh, tick off our trading partners who don't like farm subsidies here. Back to you. Okay, thank you very much, Jane Wells. Stay with us, by the way. We're going to go right to the folks this bill will impact. Tom Bias, president of the National Farmers Union. Kathy Ozer, director at the National Family Farm Coalition, joining us now. Kathy, where does your group stand on this bill? Well, we're opposing the kind amendment that's going to be on the floor pro probably later today. Yep. We support farm policy that enables farmers to get a fair price from the market, not to be dependent on subsidies, but we do realize that we need a farm program, we need systems that work, we need a reserve policy, and we're hopeful that with the Senate action later this year, we will have a bill that works better for family farmers. But you're against subsidies. Well, we are against a, a system based on subsidies, but until we get a change in the system, farmers need a government um, assistance, we need a subsidy program that's fair, and we need um, farmers to be able so to survive for subsidies. disasters. So we're you're for, for subsidies. subsidies we're for subsidies in the current situation. We are against a long-term subsidy-based system. Okay, Tom, we where does your organization stand? Tom? Okay, I don't think Tom can hear us right now, so we'll continue on with Kathy. Uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, go ahead. Mark, can I ask a question? Sure, Jane. Well, my, my question is, the, the bill as it is proposed would only uh, cut about 3,000 farmers out of subsidies with this $1 million cutoff point in income. That leaves still about 1.5 million farmers getting subsidies. Why should someone who's not farming today get $60,000 in taxpayers' money? Kathy? Well, we feel strongly that people 
farming, there, there are currently some loopholes that need to be closed, but we strongly support a system that enables farmers to get a fair price. We strongly support a, a system that reflects what farmers need to stay on their farm. We need a permanent disaster program. We need a reserve program. And the current system, the way it's been since 2002, has meant that when prices are high, like right now, higher than they've been, farmers are getting substantially less payments. So some of those numbers are from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. We need a system that looks at, at prices and reflects that in the market. It, does, it is shocking, though, when you look at who gets subsidies in this country. It's not the small farmers. It's, it's the big farmers who, in many cases, are, are making a lot of money. I mean, according to the, the data that we have, 80% of the farm subsidies are going to the 10% of the wealthiest farmers out there. I mean, that, those are the guys who don't need a subsidy. So it, it does seem very hard to argue as to why we would have them at all, unless they're going to the people who really need them. Well, some of those payments are going to people that really need them. We're in a situation 20% um, of it. Well, more than 20%. The numbers are somewhat skewed. Uh, Tufts University did a really good study a couple years ago showing that farmers who are most dependent, people who are getting conservation payments, getting farm payments, actually come up in some of the higher percentiles when, in fact, they are not necessarily that large. It's corporate agribusiness okay. that's buying the product. They want cheap grain that's fueling their profits and the profits of corporate livestock. All right, Tom Bias, I believe we can, you can hear us uh, now? Yes, I can. Okay. Uh, but you really couldn't hear much of the discussion, I take it? Right. Okay. Let's start from, from square one and ask you, um, you know, where your organization stands on this bill that's, uh, I believe, going to be in the House today or tomorrow. Well, we, we fully support the House Agriculture Committee's bill, and the reason is uh, it, it does reform the process. You know, I heard uh, part of the lead-in to the show about all these billionaires and millionaires getting payments, and no one wants to see that happen. The committee did take the steps to start the process of reducing those. Uh, in fact, the real number uh, is $500,000 in adjusted gross income uh, as long as a producer uh, receives two-thirds of their income from the marketplace. But the bill's a good one. It, it addresses a lot of the reform that the critics said we need to have. It increases conservation spending by $4.6 billion, nutrition programs by $4 billion, fruits and vegetables by $1.6 billion, and renewable energy by $2.5 billion. And, and really, it's the commodity title that's just remaining stagnant. And I would also point out that the commodity title of the 2002 Farm Bill saved federal taxpayers $26 billion over five years. If all pro pro federal programs were as fiscally responsible as the commodity title of the Farm Bill, we'd have a budget surplus, not a budget deficit. So it sounds like you are practicing here the politics of the possible. You'd like more, but this is okay. It's as good as, as you think you can get, right? Am absolutely. And this is just the first step in the process. You know, this right. bill still has to work through the Senate and through the conference. And, and you know, we're, we're going to be seeking improvements. But this bill also has an important priority for the Farmers Union and many farmers and ranchers. Uh, it finally uh, settles uh, mandatory cool country of origin labeling. All right. Yeah. Tom and Kathy, thanks very much. We, we all appreciate it. Jane, thanks so much. Thank you. And apologies to Tom for not being able to get him into most of that conversation. The technical issue came up.